So his tefillah, his tefillah is not the highest level, it's only a za'aka. The one that's stuck in jail, also it could be as a good lawyer, the lawyer will get him out. So again, it's a za'aka. We find the Kali Yisrael used tzaka. It says, when they when they were, where were they? By the Yamsuf. They had the Mitzrim on one end and the Yamsuf right in front of them. They had nowhere to go, no place to hide. There was nothing left. So all they had was a Kaddish Baruch Therefore, there was a Tzaka. The Malm is telling us that when thing, when, when that first of all, Tzila is always available to us. But not only that, when we feel that there's no choice left, we got to realize, you got to dive in your hearts out. You have to really mean it. And of course, right now is the Ace Tzara. I'm doing the Ace Tzara. That means that the tefillah that we're offering is elevated to a level of the Ayraisa. We daven every day. It's very nice we daven every day. It's a Drabana. Right now, during an Ace Tzara, the tefillah that we offer is a the Ayraisa, a much higher level. So the first thing we're mentioning over here, the first comment over here, that we can take to heart, that we can think about during these days, is our tefillah has to be at a much higher level. That's the first thing. The second thing is something which we've actually spoken about in, in these Tale of Mount Shiorim, something we spoke about, but we'll just mention it in, 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 in a nutshell. Dabra Melech tells us, that the tour, the tour brings this, that during the time of Dabra Melech, there was a terrible Magaifa. There were a hundred people dying every single day. And Dabra Melech thought about this, and he looked at the Pasuk, what does Hashem want of us? And he realized, I'll take you Yimah Alameya, read this as Meya, he says, Hashem wants Meya Brachas. Now, what does that mean? It's, I mean, it's very, very nice. You see all these things, okay, let's make a Brachas campaign, and everything will be good. The way my Chavrusa mentioned to me this morning, he said to me, you know, when, when something catastrophic on such an international level happens, it can't just be a brachas campaign that, that's going to that's gonna save the day. So what, is, what does this mean, these, these brachas? What was the purpose of the brachas? So it seems that people were disconnected from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And by saying, by being masakin to make mea brachas, 100 brachas a day, it gives a person many, many opportunities throughout the day to connect with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it seems that could be the connection that we have the, it's not so, it's, it's shvach. You know, sometimes you're supposed to have five lines, you know, right now have bad service. Our connection seems to be shvach. So it comes along, David Amel, he says, the Magaifa is Hashem saying, Karuna, Hashem saying, call out to us. Hashem wants us to connect with him, to reconnect. So says David Amel, you can reconnect by making brachas. Now, what does that mean? So I wanted to explain possibly like this. Again, if you've heard this from me, so forgive me. It's a good chazor anyway, at least for myself. The Gemara tells us in Chagiga, in the second parak, that Adam Rishon initially, he was Misayf Oilam His size from one end of the world all the way to the other end of the world. He encompassed the entire world. Kibon Shechata, once he did an Avera, so HaKadosh Baruch Hu was Meniach, his calf, on top of him. And the Hikten, he became much smaller, and there's a gear on the side that says, the Hikten Ad Meya. He was, he was diminished, he was minimalized until he was the size of 100 amas, which 100 amas is guns fine also. But if you start off as a CN tower and they make you into a two-story building, so that's very small. If other Rishon encompassed the entire world and now he's only 100 amas, that's very small. But what does it mean, the 100? So we can explain this as follows. Initially, Adam Rishon, he encompassed the entire world. What does that mean? That by way of a marshal, when, when the NASA spaceship is up, in, is up in, on the moon, when they say, Houston, we got a problem, right there at that second, as they're saying it, there's no time delay, but from the spaceship on, on the moon to Houston, right there at the exact same moment as he's saying it, they're hearing it. And the way it initially was when HaKadosh Baruch Hu made the world was that we were so connected with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it was, it was one-on-one. But Kivan Shechata, once that very happened, we lost that connection. We lost it. We were mocked and we became smaller. However, 
Hiktinad Meya. What's the Meya? Meya Brochus. Hakadosh Baruch Hu still told us you may be separated, but you can reconnect any time that you offer up a bracha. That's your ability to go and reconnect with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And if it worked by the days of David Melech during that Magefa, there were a hundred people every day dying. David Melech said, "Let's reconnect with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. That's going to stop the Magefa." It's another thing to think about nowadays with this terrible Magefa. Again, reconnecting to Hakadosh Baruch Hu thinking about different ways that we can constantly connect with Hashem. Another item. We find, this is a beautiful comment from the Orachayim HaKadosh, we find that there are four classes of Klal Yisro on four different days in the calendar. Says the Orachayim HaKadosh, there's something that's called Shabbos, there's something that's called Yom Tiv, Cholomoyed, and Pure Chol weekday. Says the Rechaim HaKadosh, if you look at Shabbos, the Gemara on Shabbos actually tells us in the Kuf Yutes that the entire world exists because of the Hevel PM, Shal Tinoikis Shal Beitz Rabbim, Tashbar. That means that the, the, the Torah that emanates from a child's mouth, and again, right now is the time where, where, where children are trying their hardest, the yeshivas are closed, the Chadarim are closed. The entire world exists based on the terror of children. Why? Because they're the highest level of Kedusha. They're the purest. Says the Rachel Makadish, that is the day called Shabbos, the purest, holiest day of the week. What about adults? What about the adults? We love to learn Torah also. We come to Shir, even if there's Madan Schar Batsida, some virtual Cholent, but we still love to be able to learn Torah. We have enjoyment, we have enjoyment from it. So he says, Liyamtiv is a time of enjoyment, but adults aren't as pure as children are. We've been around the block. So we can still find joy in Torah and mitzvahs. So that's a level of Kedusha called Yamtiv. Not as high as Shabbos, but it's still a tremendous level of Kedusha. Then he says that there's a third level, it's called Cholomite. What's Cholomite? Some people, they can't learn for whatever the reasons are. They have a hard time doing certain mitzvahs for whatever the reasons are, but they want to be mishtativ in other people's mitzvahs and other people's tayr. So they support it. So those people, they're like cholamoy. There's kedusha, but there's also the chol. It's a mixture. And then there's the fourth level, the balei aveira. They reject the tayr and they shun the tamid chacham rechman They waste their time in pursuits of pleasures. It's a life of chol, which is devoid of any kedusha. So it says the Rechem Makadosh that gives us a new appreciation, a new insight of the purity of Shabbos and the opportunity that it affords. And, and from that, we'd like to say that if a regular Shabbos is so high, so imagine what Shabbos HaGadol is. Kabuchem or Shabbos HaGadol. Now that means that it's not enough on a regular Shabbos to have a, a feeling of, ah, Mechaya, Shabbos is coming. What would I do without it? I get to sleep. I can, you know, I can really relax. And we'll, we'll, we'll turn back on the problems after Shabbos. It's so much more than that. That is a key of Einik Shabbos, it's true. However, it's also a wasted opportunity. We have to understand that just as Shabbos infuses Kedusha into the coming week, and our week is going gonna, is gonna to look one way or another based on Shabbos. If a person has a good Shabbos, his week is completely different. He's reinvigorated, he's refreshed. And the Torah tells us, the Shabbos HaGadol sets forth the Kedusha of Pesach. That means that this Shabbos, this week, we're setting forth, we have ability to set forth what Pesach is going to look like. So I'd like to ask a fundamental question. Why are we laboring so much when it comes to preparing for Pesach? If you, if you, if you go through your different messages that are coming through nonstop, you see there's so many ways out, so many coolers available. This year, sell, sell this type of chametz, sell that type of chametz, prepare this, prepare that. Through a guy, through not. There's a lot of different tools a person can take. And the mice, uh, you know, if I typically use a, 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 if I typically use a toothpick to go cleaning the sockets, this year you don't have to do it. Why? Because save your kayak for, for, for the family, for the children. There's thousands of tools available, and they're all good, solid tools. But Pesach is a time, for some reason, it's a time of chametz. 
It's Chumrah after Chumrah on top of Chumrah. If you look at Shulchan Aruch, most of these Minhagim can't be found anywhere. Yet, Klal Yisrael is medaktik and we're mahadir over and over again to do things perfectly, to do things well. You go and tell a, tell a wife, I mean, the husbands are all coming back. They're upset. It could be naked like this. The women are, 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 are shaking their heads. They're nodding their heads. They're not going to stop. They're not going to give up from the way they're scrubbing and cleaning. Because it's Pesach. But why? What's so important? So I want to explain why this year, perhaps the Chumruz are more important than ever. Now, I'm not, I'm not a fan of Chumruz. But perhaps this year, they're more important than ever. There are two aspects, there are two ways that Akadosh Baruch Hu treats us. Two different ways. There's two anhogas, if you will. There's Midas Hadin, and there's Midas Harachmim, or Midas Aches, it depends how you want to call it. Din is not really the way Akadosh Baruch Hu wants to inter- interact with us. However, there's no choice because it's needed for the Kiyom. It's needed for the Kiyom of the Olam, came of the world. Otherwise, things would become hefker. Schar v'oynish wouldn't happen. But the truth is, Hashem wants to interact with us with chesed and rachamim, but there's no choice. Din is needed. Midas ha-din could be called chitzonyas. I'm saying, I know I'm saying a little bit of a deeper thing, but Baruch Hashem, you know the chash of Olam here can handle this. Midas ha-din could be called chitzonyas. It's Hashem's external side. It's a facade. Hashem uses it out of necessity, but not because that's how He wants to handle with us. Hashem wants to deal with the Pneumius, which is really Chesed and Rachamim. Hashem so badly wants it. He wants to shower us with Chesed, with Hashem's Tevis, and all the good things. But the Chetzanius gets in the way because there's no choice. That's the Midas Adin. Let's explain this a little bit deeper. I have one request, and this is what I'm asking for. What's the difference between a she'ela and a bakasha? Achas sho'alti meis Hashem, oisa asha'el. That's what I'm asking. Achas bikashti meis Hashem, oisa avakish. What's sho'alti and what's mevakish? What's bakasha? So the Swarm explained that when a person comes and asks you for something that he needs, She'ela is what a person asks when he needs something. However, just because he needs something, he doesn't not, he's not going to ask for everything. A person comes to you and he says, the, 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 the person knocks on your door for tzedakah, and he says, he says you, you always help me, please, uh, minimum $180, depending on, on whose door he's knocking at. And you're thinking, you know, is $180 really going to help you out? Is that really going to go ahead and, and solve all your problems? After $180, are you getting back on the plane and going back to the show? I know a lot of people about the book. Glad you write the check to send the guy back. But when he's asking for 180 is that really what he, what, what, what he wants? Is that really what he needs? That's what his ask is. Sha'il is what a person asks when he's in need. But Bakash is what he truly wants. He really needs... He really wants a hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars. But he's only willing to ask for Meizah see, but whatever the reason is, he's only willing to ask for for hundred and eighty dollars. Davra Melech says, Hashem. I'm going to ask for one thing, what I need. But Isa Abakish, you can be sure that what I'm asking for is exactly what I need. I'm asking. I'm giving the full ask. That's how Davra Melech is. But the truth is, it's not always the case. It's not always like that. Often we ask for something we really want a lot more, but we're embarrassed to ask for more. And the truth is, HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Hanhaga with us can be that way as well. What does that mean? Din, din in the world is Hashem's She'ela, meaning it's what He needs. It's, it's what He's asking for based on a need. Hashem summons it. What does Hashem truly want? Hashem truly wants Chesed and Racham. So, the ask or the need is the need is going to be the she'ela, that's din, but the want, the bakasha is really chesed rachem. Let's go a step further. So Hashem has for each and every one of us she'elas and bakashos. 
Hashem asks us of things. He gives us a shulchan aruch full of dinim. He says, keep the din. Halach is necessary to sustain the world. But the truth is Hashem wants us, he wants more than just us walking around being midaktik, kichur asaira on everybody and on the halachas. He really wants us to go lufnimish or sadin. He wants us to go above. Now, yes, it's true that every step of Shulchan Aruch, if it's kept meticulously, is the most beautiful thing. And it gives HaKadosh Baruch a great pleasure. But if we want to be Ma'er Chesed from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if we want to turn it from Hashem dealing with us and Din, then we have to go and deal back. We have to be, we have to go Lifnim Mishra Sadin in order to get Hashem to deal with us Lifnim Mishra Sadin. If our Avaidah is only based on Dikta Kadin, then we're only going to be tapping into the Chitzonius of Hashem's Ratzim, which is what is that? That's just Mira Sadin. So now, so first of all, Chedesh Nisan is the time it's Mesugal for Nisim, which we need now more than ever, more than, more than any time in recent history at least. I can say more than ever, but more than any time in recent history. We need those Nisim. If we want that to happen, it can only be if we're going to be willing to go with Nimeshura Sadin. That's another idea. Now that's also, that doesn't dafka mean scrubbing like a, like a meshugana, you know, going and, and, and losing sleep over it. It could be the way we deal with other people. It could be if, we're, if we find that we're typically midactic on other people and, and we're, so, we're so exacting on other people. That's one of the reasons why we lost the base of English. So it could be it's a time to start dealing with other people with Nimeshur Sadin as well. That can be a schus. And the fourth item, the fourth item, we'll ask a simple question. Shabbos HaGadol. So we'll ask the following question. Why did Kal Yisrael deserve to be redeemed? Simple question. What was the special merit? Now, the point of here is not just the Chazar history. It's not to review history. Why do I say that? Because if Pesach, we have an obligation. What is it? Chayev Adam Liris is Atzmai. Kilu hu Mitzrayim. That we're obligated to look at ourselves as if we went out of Mitzrayim. That means right now we're supposed to feel it. So that means that whatever Schus Klai Yisrael had to go out to merit the Geula, we need to search within ourselves today for the same thing, to be able to merit a Geula. So now, if that's the case, it's incumbent on us to figure out what was the reason why we were, why we were brought, brought out of Mitzrayim. So Moshe Rabbeinu was chose to be the leader of Klai Yisrael. Why was that? So Chazal tells us based on the Pasuk, Vayar B'Siv Laisam. He looked around and he saw what was going on by other people. Rashi writes, Vayar B'Siv Laisam, Nasan Enav V'Libay, Leis Meitzer Aleim. Nasan Enav V'Libay. He directed his eyes and his heart, Leis Meitzer Aleim, to be distressed over them. He paid attention to what was going on. So the Maral writes over here something fascinating. He says, this was not the first time that Moshe Rabbeinu ever saw what they were going to. The Yarbis of Lysim. Where, where was he all this other time until then? He saw what was going on, but said that something changed at this junction. Something changed right now. He explains that Moshe at this point, the Yarbis of Lysim, Nosan Enov Belibay, he made a concerted, deliberate effort to feel, to empathize, and to identify the pain that he was seeing amongst everybody else. Observation and empathy is not the same thing at all. Two different things. You can observe people going through things, but it doesn't mean that you empathize, doesn't mean you feel what they're going through, doesn't mean you can even identify with what they're going through. Right? They, they, say you never, they say you never judge a person until you, until, until you run in his shoes for, for a full mile. Because at that point, you know, if you judge him, you already have a shoe, you can run away. But seriously, you can't, just because the person going through something, doesn't mean you can identify. Moshe Rabbein was not an aim of the Libra. He spent time internalizing their pain. Because of that, he would be their leader. Now, why is that so important? So if we look in Pasik, if we look in Pasik, Mem, Paragid Reis, Pasik, Mem, and Shemais, it says over there, the Kali Yisrael was in Mitzrayim, for 430 years. Now that's not true. He wasn't. We weren't. So Rashi says that 
the number isn't just an arbitrary number, but the 430 years starts from the time that Avram Avinu was informed of Klai Yisrael going into Mitzrayim. Avram Avinu knew about this. He felt the Tsar. He told this over to Yitzchak. He passed the baton of Tsar that he was feeling for Klai Yisrael for their future. He passed it to Yitzchak. Yitzchak went and he passed it off to Yaakov Avinu. By the time that we got into Mitzrayim, we got into Mitzrayim, there was only 210 years left remaining from the 430. So 220 years later, we went into Mitzrayim. The obvious activation were already feeling tsar for us. And as a, as a result, that would account for more than one half of the time that we were there. That got us out early. So we got out early. Why? Because there, was, there were people that were there taking in our tsar, feeling our tsar, and that would get us out early. So I guess what I'm suggesting over here is that we should all be gesund. We shouldn't have we, we, we shouldn't have to go through what, what, what other people are going through on our behalf. Whoever's in the matzif, the matzif, who's sick right now, they should experience refuas and yeshuas so quickly. And Kalah Yisrael should, should be able to get out of this very fast. But at the same time, if we want to help them out, the same way the Abbas Agdashim felt the Tsar, that accounted for half. The same way Moshe Rabbeinu became the leader of Kal Yisrael and he would take them out. Why? Because of Ayar B'Siv Laisim. So we need to feel the Tsar of everybody else. That's our part of the Cheshman. We have to do our part by feeling their Tsar. If we can do our part, we can feel their Tsar. And that means when you see, when you see somebody's name, stop, say a capital Tillim. There's a Tillim, there's a Tillim gathering. Join, obviously, we're, we're not in person, but join online, join in Zoom, whatever it is. Feel their tsar. See what we can do for other people. Make a phone call to a person who's in tsar, who's, who's going through something. If we can feel their tsar and we're being mishtatif in their tsar, that's going to change. It's going to be a game changer. That got Kali Yisrael out half the time. Half the time we should have been, we, we should have been there for double time. We got out after half the time. And this is something, if we feel their tsar, we can take part of the all unto ourselves by doing that. And that will be as chus that we shouldn't have any more karbanas, we shouldn't have any more chilin, we shouldn't hear any more, any more bad news, but only from here on we should merit to hear the fuus and Yeshuas, and we should merit that we should already see Mashiach right away. We can feel his footsteps, we can hear his footsteps already. He's coming. And we should be zarech in the month of Nisim. The month of Nisim is the month. We should be zarech to the Gula Shlema. Thank you, everybody. Amen. Shkoyach. Shkoyach, Thank you. Thank you. Shkoyach, Rav Martha. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Cholent, if anyone wants, 94 Del Park. Where is it? 94 Del Park, if anyone wants Cholent. Do you have curbside delivery? <laughs> <laughs> Cult of all the best. Hold on one second, one second. First of all, L'chaim. L'chaim, L'chaim. <laughs> L'chaim. I, I just wanted to get back to the, you think that the Sherish of, of uh, Chesed is higher than Din? That's what I understood from the Really, the Rabbanu Shleilam wanted to deal with us only in Chesed. That's he what doesn't want to, he, he, Hashem doesn't want to deal with us in a way that is tit for tat, me the connected, me you did this, I'll do that. That's that's something that the, the world couldn't exist with then. I mean, in, in a perfect world, everyone's just going to do what they need to do and fine. And there's there's no need for chesed. But Akadosh Baruch understands that we understand that, that the world can't exist that way, and Hashem wants us to feel good. Hashem is not interested in, in smashing us up every day. That's not. No, no one wants to feel that way. Hashem loves us. He wants to give us. He wants to give us everything, more than we want. Hashem wants to give us. Midas <laughs> Sedin is a last resort. It's not a first, right? No, no, I I understand. But there's got to be there's got there's chesed in the din. What I'm saying is that the chesed oh, okay. that's, inside that's, that's, the din is higher than just chesed that's openly. That's somehow I'm, for sure because that's a person who's who's incorporating 
as we said, for example, using our muscle of, of Shulchan Aruch, that's a person who's incorporating every halach into his life, and he's also going with the Mishra Right. The Nimishra mm-hmm. has din has din in it, of course. Right. But that's, that's the rabbi can do that. <laughs> Okay, Yeshakayach, thank you so much for coming on. Hatzlacha, have a good yontiv. Continue to be Marbitz Torah, do everything that you do, continue to do more. You should have Hatzlacha, bring people inspiration. Amen. Okay, and the Mirza Shem, we should be able to do this in, in person. Amen, thank you. And, and Mitzvah, okay. I, I can't wait for that invitation again. Okay, Mirza Shem. Thank you. All the best. Call to. Thank you. Good day. Thank you.